because we don't have that much time and then we can discuss later, but just a couple of points. The last time uh, the uh, cloud strategy group met, it was the morning that the, uh, the first revelations came about the uh, NSA, uh, well, the NSA Snowden revelations. And, um, well, uh, that more, well, at the press conference, I said, well, this is, the, this is an opportunity for Europe because, the, um, in fact, uh, most of cloud services that are offered in Europe today are offered by U.S. companies and became clear on the first, from the first news that, in fact, uh, the problem was that uh, the U.S. companies being subject to U.S. law and jurisdiction and uh, the extraterritoriality of U.S. law meant that, in fact, they could look into cloud and this could be, should be a spur to, uh, to move on with the cloud. Uh, we'll see what happens when we have our next meeting next week, uh, what the thinking is. Unfortunately, because of NSA, of course, there's, a, there's so much confusion and there's so much stupidity uh, by policymakers or people who should know better that, I mean, we find sort of, you know, I mean, everything from saying let's stop trade negotiations with the United States to we need our own NSA. I read these things and I, you people have no clue, uh, which, is, uh, which is a problem, I think, and it's become over-politicized. Um, clearly, the, the cloud, I mean, a, the cloud, I would first also argue, is a bad word. Cloud associates with fog, with not knowing what's going on, something that is vaporized, vaporware, it disappears, things clear up, that means that's no longer cloudy and it's good. I mean, so, in other words, the cloud is unfortunately one of the worst metaphors we've chosen, and I think that is already a block. Now, the cloud is highly mystified. Uh, we have a cloud in Estonia. We never call it a cloud. Uh, we didn't even think of calling it a cloud, but it works as a cloud. Um, here, and I would say that when we look at, at the European levels, clearly in our interest to have a European, you have European standards, European regulations that would do a cloud, or whatever we want to call it. On the other hand, uh, in this, my worry at this point going into Berlin next week is that because of all of the uninformed paranoia about what clouds, what cloud is, what NSA is, um, that in fact we, we could be faced uh, with problems as opposed to, I mean, sort of it, what maybe it's not going to be an impetus to move ahead, but rather everyone has become so so fearful that we will see the opposite. We will see the equivalent of what we see occasionally in the Europe, the renationalization of policy and an antagonism toward, toward creating an all-union or union-wide uh, cloud. And I think that's a real threat, um, uh, which before was not the case. We in Estonia will continue to do our thing anyway. Uh, and I will say perhaps later on about to how we're moving in this direction with some within our neighborhood. Um, let me just say a few words, just because there's not much time right now. The first thing about uh, cloud and NSA, which I just like to put out there, is that NSA is all about one of the three parts of computers uh, of, of digital security, and that is confidentiality. That's good, that's, I mean, that's one area. What affects the cloud and how cloud and the fears of cloud and the, in the, the issues we have to deal with cloud are not confidentiality, it's another part of it, which is integrity. You don't want to put data up there if you think that it can be manipulated. You don't want your medical records, your financial records, you don't want those, you want to make sure that if you put it in the cloud, it's not going to be changed. That's much worse than someone seeing what your medical records are, is that someone can change your medical records. And so far, to my knowledge, it may get, it may change, but to my knowledge, there has been no indication of the NSA changing anyone's data. So for the point of view of companies, banks, states, individuals, hospitals, the NSA issue, as bad as it is, or whatever it is, is all about confidentiality. It's not about integrity, and the issue that we fundamentally face when it comes to the cloud is integrity. And of course, accessibility, which is the third component of cybersecurity. Can you get what you have? But in any case, um, I think 
There is so much misinformation, so much misguided thinking right now on these issues that I'm concerned about the whole process being halted. The other thing about the mystification of the cloud is that, well, it is mystified. I mean, we, you, the issues of, of, the, of cloud computing, in fact, uh, I, I would argue from our experience in Estonia are, are reducible to the legal framework, to the architecture, and then technical solutions. By the legal framework, what I mean is not simply standards, but something as simple as, and what was an ultimate uh, uh, kick for us to have a cloud, though we didn't call it a cloud, is we have a simple rule, a law in Estonia. You may not ask anyone for their data more than once, if it's a, if it's a government, any kind of anything to do with the government. So if you have already put in your number, saying this is my personal ID card and number, um, it is the government's responsibility to find out whatever it needs to know. So if you want to register a company in Estonia, and you're whatever, Estonian, you have to, I mean, everywhere you register a company, you have to say, you know, are, what are your personal record, all of these things. Most countries, you have to go and prove you're not a criminal. You have to prove that you have no outstanding debts before the tax authorities. In Estonia, you put in your ID card, since the law says it cannot ask you these things once they have the data, they have your tax records, they have your criminal records. So this is what enables us and gives us the competitive advantage of doing of registering a company in 15 minutes. Because, I mean, what, let the computer do what uh, what I mean what takes you hours to do or days. Uh, I mean, the, just look at the data. It's all the data. They're all there which was the whole motivation for Estonia to computerize as heavily as it did, is having no people. We wanted computers to do the work that people do and do much worse. Those areas where they do it worse. So that's a legal part. The architecture is crucial, that you want to, be, you want to have confidence in the architecture. Uh, so we have a, uh, I guess we can now call it a distributed public service bus. It operates on the same principle as an enterprise service bus, but it's a pub distributed public service bus, so the data are all over the place, and is for the public sector. That's the architectural side, and then uh, the technical side takes care of the integrity, because, it's so, uh, because you can't really alter things, I mean, between having a public key infrastructure and then also actually now moving on to actually authenticating individual data bits, um, we are sure of integrity. So there are solutions which are legal, solutions which are architectural, and then there are finally technical solutions uh, which we leave to the guys with PhDs in, in higher mathematics. Um, where all of this will, where this will go and where it is going, uh, regardless of the EU, we are already working with Finland on a common platform which will mean that services will be accessible on a common platform. Finns can use their Finnish services in Estonia ultimately. I mean, we just started this. Estonians who are in Finland will be able to use their services. So, for example, uh, we are, we're not there yet because it's, it's all very complicated, but for example, in Estonia we have a uh, we have a digital prescription system. 97% of prescriptions in Estonia are done online, which means if a doctor says you need to take penicillin, he writes it into the computer, and you, without having a piece of paper that you can't read, but you just take your ID card and you can go to any, any pharmacy in the country, anywhere, and stick in your ID card, SIM card, and the pharmacist gives you medicine. That's very nice, but Estonia's not too big. Um, now, if we then, if we have a common platform, then an Estonian who happens to lose his medicine somewhere up in sort of a thousand kilometers north in Oulu, um, he goes, he would go to the pharmacy, stick in his card, and the pharmacist there would say, oh, you have a prescription, and give you the, the drug that you need. Now you can imagine this in all kinds of areas. 
Of course, the obvious place that we start is with the finance ministry because we have so many connections between each other and all kind of people try to play funny games with taxes. So that's where we start because it's revenue generating. But anyway, these are the kinds of things we are moving ahead with. This is all cloud. We don't call it cloud. Uh, but this is the direction to go when these are the kinds from the services from the public side that, that can be developed that should be developed, we think, all across Europe, but given some of the reticence in other countries and their lack of knowledge on what it all means, it's not happening. But we will do it anyway. Uh, we hope, and I'll say one last thing because there really isn't any time, but I'll just say that where all of this becomes a fundamental issue is that, uh, that ultimately, uh, we all, right now, we all have rules saying we cannot take public data and put it outside of our borders. That's basically every country has rules like that. And with the NSA, it's going to be even worse. Uh, we see this, you know, with the ridiculous statements I said before. In fact, it's probably in our interest in Europe to actually be able to store our data in multiple locations across the European Union. After the experience of Fukushima, where we saw that data were in fact Unique data were lost because of a because of a, a natural disaster. That in fact, one of the things that we should be doing in Europe is actually have, distributing our data and rep, and having sort of different copies of our data in different places. Again, I fear these kinds of very sensible solutions with the with a misunderstanding of what NSA is about will in fact move in the opposite direction. But I think we can come back to all these issues because I can talk all day and I won't. I, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. It's great.